Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ask Total Biscuit Anything. I believe this is episode 7 we're on at the moment. My name is, of course, Total Biscuit. It would be a little bit weird if it wasn't. And I'm answering questions asked to me on the r slash cynical Brit AMA on the 29th of September. These questions have already been asked and answered, so there is little point in submitting any new ones. Let's continue, shall we, with the questions. And we're going to go on to this one by Zizor, which I'm going to have to change around a little bit because this was 11 days ago, so... Which game do you currently enjoy the most? Well, back then I said I'm playing both War of the Roses and Chivalry and having fun with both right now. And I also commented that my favorite games while I work are almost always multiplayer competitive games because I can do a complete session in a fairly short period of time and feel like I've accomplished something. Which is legit, but actually over the last couple of weeks that's changed due to the release of two very, very good single player titles, that being Dishonored and XCOM. I think quite frankly you know my opinion on Dishonored, it is awesome. There's a few problems with it, but it's mostly awesome, and you can watch my video on the subject if you wish to know more, which is, to my great pride, currently the most viewed Dishonored review on the entire internet, which is especially impressive considering it's not actually a review. But there you go. You search for Dishonored review, you will find WTF is Dishonored above pretty much everything else. So, yeah, pretty happy about that. But... That is coming to a close. I might do a second playthrough. I'm pretty much almost at the end now. So, a second playthrough, perhaps with a more lethal approach. Aside from that, though, yeah, that'll be about it, I would imagine, with that game. XCOM. Well, XCOM I have not given you my impressions of as of yet, but you probably heard an awful lot about it on Twitter because I have succumbed to XCOM fever. Currently, in the last two or three days, yeah, it would be two, I have put in 17 hours. Oh, Christ. My productivity level has gone through the floor, and it's a very good job that I'd actually stockpiled some videos because I just haven't had time to do anything, because I've just been playing XCOM, 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 and I have an absolute laundry list of problems with this game. I really do. And once I get around to doing the video of it, when I think that I've got far enough into the game to justify it, then I will lay it all on you, from mechanical misjudgments all the way down to the fact that it is chock full of various camera bugs and problems and AI issues. Who am I? But it doesn't really matter all that much because the damn game is still ridiculously fun and we haven't had a game in like that in so long that I don't think I realized how much I missed it. A lot of my teenage years were spent playing these single-player, turn-based games, tactics games. Stuff like, of course, Fallout Tactics, Shining Force 3 on the Sega Saturn, Final Fantasy Tactics, and of course, XCOM. Yes, and all of its spin-offs. I actually enjoyed Apocalypse the most. That was the third game in the series. Some people don't really like that, but I thought it had a very interesting metagame going on, and the whole idea was that instead of venturing across the globe, you're in this big city, and you have to deal with the various entities within the city. That was a really cool idea. And it had a number of different innovations, including the fact that you could play the game in real time, although it wasn't exactly the best thing ever. I wouldn't recommend doing that. That's definitely not optimal. I think XCOM captures a lot of the spirit of the series, and that's possibly the most important thing. Beyond anything else, I think the fact that it captures the spirit and it reminds me so much of the original XCOM and it gives me the same kind of thrills that I got from the original XCOM. Although, it doesn't really convey the same sense of terror. I think if you play the game on classic difficulty, which is the one that I would recommend, that's the one that makes the game really great. Normal, in my experience, is a bit too easy. Impossible is just ridiculously unfair. Although, I guess you can go on that if you want the authentic terror from the deep experience. Oh, God. Ugh. Anyway, the game isn't quite as scary, but it's still very tense, especially if you play in Iron Man mode, which is man's mode, by the way. There's a reason it's got the word man in it, that is man mode. Play the game in man mode, don't play the game in non-man mode, because that would make you, well, not a man, would it not? Mm. Logic, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot argue with it. Whatever the case, that prevents you from saving the game and reloading it. Every time something happens in the game, it automatically saves it, so you have to live with your actions and consequences, which makes you very carefully consider every move that you make, because, of course, that move may very well be the brave soldier's last, and how terrible a thing that would be for them. I will bring you a full video once I feel that I've gotten all my thoughts in order. I think a game of this magnitude requires a great deal of analysis, plus the fact that I'm playing the crap out of it is very much impeding my ability to actually do anything with the game video-wise, although I did stream a couple of nights back. Go and check out my Twitch.tv channel, click the videos button, and you'll find at the top there is actually a one and a half hour XCOM stream that I did, so if you do want another look at the game, then that would be a great way to do it. I think, honestly, if I was going to give an ETA, which I 
usually don't do because it gets me into trouble, I am probably shooting for a weekend release of the XCOM video with my full thoughts. Alright, next question. This one comes in from Munsouls8. Will your role in the Axiom Esports team affect the content you produce? For example, special replays on your SC2 channel of Axcrank. So... I would imagine StarCraft 2 wise, yeah, there will be something of a focus on Axiom players. So there's definitely going to be crank replays. There's already crank replays up on Husky's channel. So we're going to be looking into doing quite a few casts of crank because, of course, he's fantastic. I hope to do more casts on the channel just featuring not only Axiom players but everything else. The problem is the StarCraft channel's really been on the back burner lately because I've been focusing so much on the growth of the main channel. And at the end of the day, it is the cash cow, it is what pays the bills. So it's important to continue focus and growth especially in a highly competitive space. But I think I'm getting to the point where more casts may be doable, especially since now my streaming has been fixed, at least for the moment. It seems to go off and on. I don't know what the hell's up with it. I think it's mostly due to Time Warner being terrible. But I would imagine I should be able to stream a little bit more, and that means more casting, more Showcraft, more I Suck at Starcraft 2, and things like that. And I hopefully, if I get the time to do this, this was supposed to happen over the weekend, but things got in the way of it occurring. I'm going to be doing a little highlights reel of Crank vs. Jadong, which is quite the matchup, and that's actually from the MLG MVP tournament, and I've been given the right to actually use those replays to create highlight reels of Crank. So that's a pretty unique thing because no one else is really allowed to do that, so hopefully I'll be able to get some of that done in the next few days. But again, can't promise anything. I am absolutely and completely smothered in work at the moment, plus I want to try and play XCOM which is technically work, but I don't think you guys would really allow me to get away with that. Next question comes in from Kiske. What are your current plans with the various sites that you have? Cynicalbread.com, Shoutcraft.com, etc. They seem to be just sitting around at the moment. Yeah, they actually are, because here's the thing. I don't even know what to do with Cynicalbread.com. I don't have a clue. I cannot figure out any reason to even own a website in my current line of work. We had it up for the longest time, and its focus was the dissemination of podcast content, which is what I did for the longest time. There was a big archive of Blue Please, TV show about video games, there was also Gaming the System, which was my gaming podcast that I used to do with Swag from Swag Show. And there's also Gaming Express, which is actually the template I'll probably be using to eventually get rid of the mailbox, which at this point is looking like it will happen sooner rather than later. I think what will happen with that is the Gaming Express format was very much a quickfire news show, and then I'll probably mix it in with perhaps a mailbox question every day so we kind of have a hybrid show again. We shall see. But what is the point of the website? That's what I have to ask you. This is what we've asked ourselves over and over again. Why, why, why? Why would you have a website? And we look through the various things. One, community interaction. Irrelevant. Doesn't matter. We have a subreddit for that. We have YouTube comments, if you really want to wade into those. We have the Facebook page, and of course we have various Twitter accounts that can be used for all of that stuff. We also have the subscriber-only chat, which is on the live stream. So there's no point in having the website up for that. It would just be another community within a community. And I hate using the term, but a forum community is actually that. You know, they are posting on the same forum. They're interacting with each other inside this little vacuum. And that is a community. But I don't really think that we need that because we already have the subreddit. So we might as well use that. The subreddit's more reliable, the subreddit's got more functionality, and we don't have to worry about maintaining it. It's modded by volunteers, and honestly, you don't need a lot of moderation on Reddit anyway. And when you do, it's very easy to deal with it. So that's not an option. Listing the YouTube videos, there is no point. There are so many better ways of knowing that are much easier to update. We used to have an automated script that could actually pull the videos directly from YouTube and auto-populate news posts. That broke about a year ago with our site and we haven't been able to use it since, so that is why things stopped updating in 2011. The most reliable ways of finding out when our new videos are released are my Twitter, and if you don't want all of my rambling, which is understandable because it's very spammy, then just follow at CynicalBrit. Like, just create a Twitter account, follow at CynicalBrit, because all that basically tweets is announcements and video updates. It's like, if there's a new video, it gets tweeted by that account without fail. So you don't even have to worry about missing anything. So that's a really good way of finding it. There's a Chrome add-on that you can get. 
The name of the add-on is YouTube Feed. Just search for Chrome extension YouTube Feed on Google. You'll find it really, really easily. Also, uh, do everyone a favor, or more to the point yourself, and download an extension called YT Show Rating, because that is wonderful. That allows you to dodge fake videos, bad videos, pretty much instantly, just by getting the ability to have the like-dislike ratio displayed in a bar under every video thumbnail. That's incredibly useful, and that will allow you to avoid a whole bunch of stupid crap on YouTube. So that's great. Other ways to do it, the Cynical Brit app. That's available on the Android store, and that is free. That's actually created and maintained by a fan. So by all means, download that. I have it on my phone. It works as intended. There's nothing wrong with it. So I would strongly suggest that you get a hold of that because it tracks almost everything. It tracks posts on the subreddit, all of our Twitter accounts, our Facebook is in there, all of the YouTube stuff. It lets you know when the next TGS podcast is live. It lets you know whether or not we are live on the live stream. It's it's a really nice app and it's nicely put together. So I would certainly recommend that. And that really comes to the crux of my argument, doesn't it? After all of that, what's the point in even having a website to have to update, which will always be behind all of these tools? So going to a website, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that people really do anymore when they can avoid it. They just want direct access to their content. Other types of content, well, I don't do podcasts anymore, aside from the TGS podcast, which is hosted on iTunes anyway, not on my website. There's no point putting the live streams there because they're already on the Twitch page, and I don't have time to create any kind of written content or, indeed, other podcasts or spoken word stuff at all. So... In conclusion, the Cynical Brit website is a complete waste of space. There is no reason for it to be there, and as a result, it's not there anymore. We replaced it for the moment at any rate, and I think it might come back at some point when we can figure out why we need it and also figure out what to do with it and probably redesign the system from the ground up. As regards to shoutcraft.com, that's usually just used for updates when SCI tournaments are on, so it's fine that that just lies defunct outside of that. We don't really mind. Next question here from Ada Berry. What games are you most interested in that's currently in development? Well, once again, this answer was out of date, so allow me to update you, because I said Dishonored. And yeah, I was right, thank God. A great game. You know, still a contender for Game of the Year, I think. So when you see my top 10 at the end of the year, if Dishonored is not in it, then either something has gone horribly, horribly wrong, or inexplicably, over the next couple of months, there are 10 games released that are better than that, and I find that highly unlikely at this stage. XCOM was also one, but, you know, again, I'm playing that now, so that's not currently in development. So I think it probably has to go down to stuff like Company of Heroes 2, because it's good to see a proper RTS. I would have, at least before the whole free-to-play announcement, said Command & Conquer Generals 2, because I'm playing that game at the moment, and I am loving it once again to death. I mean, I've loved that game since it came out. It's a wonderful RTS, absolutely fantastic design. But Generals 2 looks like it's going to be a complete mess, and I would be very, very surprised if EA managed to pull it off without making it horribly pay to win or just breaking everything completely. I mean, come on, they had to be convinced to have a single player mode. Seriously, all I used to do with General Zero I was play General's Challenge. If you don't have General's Challenge, you suck. <laughs> you really do. General's Challenge was such a great thing. All right, what else? Well... I think I would be lying if I said that I wasn't at least a little bit curious about Black Ops 2. I tend to buy the Call of Duty games, but the only one I've ever really enjoyed has got to be Black Ops. I enjoyed Black Ops multiplayer quite a bit. Yes, it was simplistic, but it was decent. It was okay, and it went just far enough down the route of a little bit OTT to be enjoyable. Modern Warfare 3 was a mess, unplayable on PC, and just generally an unbalanced piece of crap. So Black Ops 2 might be okay, you know? I think every now and again we just need a dumb shooter. And when it comes to dumb shooters, we get one every year in the form of Call of Duty. So every now and again, I will indulge in my guilty pleasure of the terrible video game known as COD Multiplayer. And, you know, it might be okay. I like the fact that Treyarch is apparently insane, whereas Infinity Ward and, of course, then Sledgehammer are just utterly arrogant. I mean, the Infinity Ward attitude, especially with Modern Warfare 2, was this is perfect, there is no reason to change anything. We have created the perfect game. And this was very much tied into their attitude towards PC users and everything like that. It's like, no, we will not allow you to change the FOV because it's perfect the way it is. You know, the arrogance just seeped out of every pore when it came to Infinity Ward. Treyarch have always been the redheaded stepchild. And yet they have been the developer that's always really innovated within the series. So it might finally be their chance to shine and finally create a game that surpasses the other stuff. So I'm intrigued. 
I don't really know where it's going to go with the single player. They claimed branching choices and things like that. I would be surprised. I mean, if they can get away from the scripted Call of Duty gameplay, bear in mind that even the first game was heavily scripted. And at the time, that was a really cool thing because it gave you this amazing atmospheric feeling. But time has passed. Games have moved on from that. And Call of Duty is an irritating stick in the mud, which unfortunately defines the entire single player FPS genre in a very negative way. And you get far too many games like, say, Battlefield 3 that follow suit and create awful single-player campaigns. Aside from that, definitely Assassin's Creed 3 for the multiplayer. I think I'm over what Assassin's Creed's got to offer from a single-player point of view, and they have failed time and again to actually provide a challenging assassination and combat experience. The counter system, just the game is just flat out too easy, and the counter system is designed to allow you to fight about 5 million people at once. Dishonored does it so much better, it's not even funny. But the multiplayer is something that I really dearly love, and I actually got into that as a result of the Aussie Gamer, who is one of my favorite YouTube guys, and he made a series on Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer, which if you haven't checked out already, you must, because it is wonderful. Absolutely great multiplayer mode. So I'm interested to see what they do with Assassin's Creed 3's multiplayer, and hopefully they don't screw it up. I have not had the chance to play it at a show, I am afraid. So we'll see. It might turn out to be good. Another one that's kind of slipped off the radar for me is Bioshock Infinite, because hopefully it gives me another dose of what Dishonored has given me, this really cool FPS rpg light stealth game that's got a very odd and colourful and, of course, completely outlandish and very sinister aesthetic to it. There's also a whole bunch of stuff that's on Kickstarter. I don't even want to go through all of it. I mean, everything that I've ever supported on Kickstarter, I just want to see out. Project Eternity, Wasteland 2, Shadowrun Returns, Necro... A couple of other things which have... God, I must have kickstarted far too many games. I've forgotten most of them. So, yes, that, that's a little unfortunate. But, yeah, also Aliens Colonial Marines might be good. We'll see. I'm intrigued to see how that one turns out. Although, really, I just want another really good Alien vs. Predator game. And AVP 3 didn't really manage to pull that off. I wish it had. I mean, it was okay. Once they got all the server problems fixed, it had some reasonable multiplayer. We actually had a, a couple of Cynical Brit community nights surrounding that, and they were good. They were actually pretty fun. But unfortunately, the game didn't really live up to its predecessors, so hopefully this one might not suck. We shall see. All right, folks, thank you very much for watching. This has been Ask Total Disc Anything. Before anyone asks, there is no mailbox today. The Questions were dire as always. I mean, you know, I don't even blame the audience anymore for it. It's not your fault. The problem is we've done so many mailboxes that everything, at least almost everything that's worth answering has already been answered. So there's so many repeats. You know, people keep saying, please don't kill off the mailbox. But, you know, and I understand because I like the mailbox format. I think it's good interaction. But I think, honestly, it's time has probably come. So... Don't worry, the new show will be better, and I'll incorporate elements from the mailbox, and then everyone will be wonderfully happy. Will they not? Uh, probably not, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Okay, folks, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time.